major support for Able to Learn Air. Green Mountain Support Services to empower neighbors with disabilities to be home in the community. Major support also includes Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support come together. Allah Israel, all people, no limits. Why are we here today? What's the reason behind this event? So today is the grand opening of the Taylor Street uh, housing and uh, bus station, and we are just so excited to have this as an addition to our community. Um, and last question, um, as far as homelessness and eradicating yeah. homelessness, do um, you think this puts a big chunk in that hole? Well, I think that uh, all strategies to address homelessness are good strategies, generally speaking. And uh, adding more housing is absolutely a part of that. Is that going to end homelessness? No. Uh, but these 30 units uh, in this building are going to be permanently affordable. Uh, over time, uh, they've got solar panels and they use heat pumps. And so the operation of them, like the, the running of them in terms of energy and utilities, should be relatively low. Uh, and that, I think, is uh, a good step in the right direction uh, towards keeping people in their homes. As, and last question, as far as Down Street is concerned, um, are, you, are you guys at City Hall, at, at the City Council going to create more partnership, partnerships with Down Street and keep them strong? Oh. Absolutely. So we have a housing um, trust fund that uh, is avail makes available money for um, people who are uh, getting into new houses in Montpelier and makes available money uh, to major projects uh, towards housing uh, in the city of Montpelier. And uh, we've given Downstreet uh, on multiple occasions uh, money towards housing projects and I have no doubt that we will continue to uh, support them and th these kinds of projects financially when they come up. Hi, my name is Bill Fraser. I'm the city manager of Montpelier. Okay. Uh, what's the main reason why we're here today and the importance of this event? Well, first of all, we're providing 30 uh, housing units in the heart of downtown. We're creating a new transportation hub for cars, rail, bikes, uh, and all sorts of uh, transportation options here in the city. Uh, and it's exciting because the, after 20 plus years of work, this is ready to open, and uh, it's, a, it's a big, it's a big day. Okay. Um, in your opinion, uh, since there's still a lot of homelessness in Montpelier, Well, I don't know. You know, I don't know the direct relationship between the amount of homeless people and housing, but uh, most of these units here are subsidized housing for affordable housing. So uh, it, it stands to reason that when you have more affordable housing in your market, that there will be more options for people. So exactly, what is this event today, and what? correlation as far as the, um, the um, partnership with Down Street and and yourself and your agency with this whole new build. Sure, so it's a very exciting event today. Uh, you know, it's a, a building owned by the city of Montpelier. They were the uh, grantee uh, for the federal funds. We'll be a uh, tenant of theirs in this building. Uh, we're very excited to operate out of here. It's a beautiful facility. It'll be a big improvement uh, for our passengers and for our uh, employees uh, with uh, break areas, bathrooms. Uh, hopefully we'll have a vending uh, uh, option in here at some point so you can buy a cup of coffee or you know a quick sandwich um, you know people can wait outside the elements and air conditioning and heating uh, so big improvement for everyone involved will there be um, just a thought will there be a security guard station here at night we'll have uh, no so we'll have customer service reps uh, stationed at the facility so you could buy a pass you can ask a question um, but there the building will not be open uh, overnight uh, at this point um, so going forward um, do you think this closed the gap with, you know, people, for example, waiting in the elements 
and not having a transit center when other places in Vermont have it. Yeah, sure. So we opened a uh, transit center in Burlington uh, back in October of 2016, and uh, that's worked out really well. Again, you know, no one wants to wait out in the cold or the rain for a bus. Uh, so with this facility, you know, we hope it uh, increases ridership, provides better service to our existing passengers, uh, and ultimately get more people on the bus and, and be more comfortable uh, doing it. Okay. What today's event uh, means for the residents of Ontario and the importance of it. Sure. So today we're celebrating the opening of the Taylor Street Apartments. That's 30 units of affordable and market rent apartments. And basically what it means for the community is more housing. More housing for everyone, more housing downtown, and more housing in this beautiful building. Okay. Um, last question. Sure. Being the fact that there's still a hole in Montpelier with homes here, do you think this um, in your opinion, this apartment building closes somewhere of a gap? Well, I, I can't say it closes a gap, but it certainly helps address the problem. So Down Street is committed to providing housing for homeless individuals, and we'll continue to do that, not just with this project and with all our projects, and hopefully in the near future, there won't be that problem here in the city. Mm -hmm. um, how long has Down Street been, uh, been part of Montpelier and, oh. and been been part of the state of Vermont? Well, Down Street's always been part of Montpelier. It actually, its roots are here in Montpelier. And Down Street was founded in 1987. So I think that's, uh, what, 32 years now. So there was nothing as far as housing and development uh, before 87? Well, as an organization, we were formed in 87. So there was other organizations that filled that need. Um, Since you're the congressman of, uh, one of the congressmen of Vermont, can you explain to me the, the importance of today's event and the reason behind this beautiful house? Uh, well, the importance is that we're building a transit center that's going to be accessible and usable by everybody, and we're building housing that's needed desperately in uh, downtown Montpelier. <clears throat> and it's an uh, energy efficiency building. No fossil fuels are going to be used to heat it. Uh, and it's about building our strong downtown communities. And uh, the thing that's so inspiring to me is that there's one obstacle after another that all the folks who had this vision had to overcome. And they did. And they did by working together. And it is an example of the power in the, of, of cooperation and persistence. So this is a, a special day where uh, there's a lot to celebrate. And this transit center in this housing is going to be available for generations. So congratulations to all who played a role. Um, last question, Congressman. Uh, since there's a, still a homeless population in the state of Vermont, do you think the 30, um, the 30 units in this building um, close the gap or close a little bit of a hole of homelessness? Why, why not? Well, they don't, but they help. I mean, it's one housing unit at a time. So the fact that you can't solve it all at once doesn't mean you don't do everything you can when you can. organization on a mission to foster social justice and create collective prosperity through the power of housing. Downstreet, along with our partner Housing Vermont, co-developed this beautiful building and we are responsible for maintaining the Taylor Street apartments in perpetuity. Today is a big deal for Montpelier and it's been a long journey to get here. I'm going to leave that story for the city to tell. So instead, I'll speak a little bit about the importance of this project. 
In recent months, Montpelier and many communities across Vermont have seen an increase in homelessness, particularly homeless youth. Like all social challenges, homelessness is a complex issue that needs many varied solutions. The Taylor Street Apartments and the French Block Apartments on Main Street that opened in January are certainly a part of the solution. Importantly, they provide a physical space that is safe and affordable and signals to an individual that they are worthy. Together, we have added a total of 48 new apartments serving previously homeless individuals, modest income households, and market rate renters to downtown Montpelier in the last year alone. This is a big step forward in our fight to end homelessness and alleviate the housing burden many of our fellow Vermonters face daily. But we must also understand that four walls and a roof are not enough to make a home. To make a house a home or to make an apartment a home, there needs to be a connection to community. Commonly, community is thought of to be one's family. But all too often, and particularly for our homeless youth, that's not an option. All of us need a community that celebrates our successes and supports us through life's challenges. For Montpelier and towns and cities around Vermont to flourish, I truly believe we all need to not only increase our attention and investment in housing, but actively create and strengthen our community connectedness. That is why I am proud to be here opening 30 additional affordable apartments in the heart of Montpelier and celebrating community. Because going beyond four walls and a roof and harnessing the power of our collective community is transformational change. And that is exactly what this project was all about. So thank you all for the community investment of time and resources to make this beautiful building and what it stands for possible. In the spirit of harnessing the power of community, I ask that as you wander around the property or order something from the great local food vendors, and while you're stomping your feet to the Sky Blue Boys, mm -hmm. take the time to connect with someone. It could be someone new, it could be an old friend, or someone you came with. What's important is that you make a connection. And if you'd like, you can start with Down Street. We have staff who are available to chat. Our tables are over here. You can also visit our brand new website at downstreet.org. And this is very high techy. You can also text three, text the word Down Street to 33777 to join the conversation as we work to harness the power of housing in our community today and every day here in our beautiful capital city and across central Vermont. Before I hand over the mic, from my full heart, I would like to say thank you all for sharing in this historic moment for our community. Be proud of your contribution, celebrate, and have some fun. Thank you. It's now my great honor to introduce a man who has been a champion for Vermonters throughout his career. Since his election to Congress in 2006, he has been a thoughtful and effective legislator who chooses governing over gridlock. The Congressman is a great builder of community and connection through his many, many round tables he has across the state of Vermont. He walks the talk, representing all of us each and every day. We're happy to have him join us here today. Congressman Lowe. I'm uh, really thrilled to be here. And you know, I mean, your remarks really kind of nail it. Uh, we're facing a lot of challenges in our country, especially in Washington. And a lot of what I hear from people, whatever their politics are, are a sense that we've got to find a way to come together uh, to get things done. But it's about a community. It's not just getting ahead for yourself. And that's why what you're talking about with community is so important. You know, Eileen's advice, talk to somebody next to you, that's important. But what's really important is finding ways to work together. What is so inspiring to me about this project is that 
if this is impossible to achieve and here it is, where do you get the money? How do you deal with the planning commission? What did, you, what did the mayor and the town manager have to contend with? Uh, what happened when you started digging and found stuff that you wish wasn't there? I mean, and this would not have happened if anybody knew what faced them when they had this wild idea of this uh, transit center and uh, the, the, the housing right here in the heart of Montpelier. So, you know, most of us get so much more satisfaction when whatever talents and whatever energy we have are put together, put towards making something that's gonna have lasting benefit. And this could not have happened without a lot of individual people deciding that they had to work together. And it's across the whole range. You know, the original money, it goes back to when uh, Jim Jeffords was our senator. And he worked with Pat Leahy, a Republican, and I think Jim was a, 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 he, a Republican and a Democrat at that point. And then you had the challenges that the state, which is always on a tight budget, had to contend with. And then you had um, our wonderful state agencies uh, that has people that just don't take no for an answer. And then you had to have that driving force and confidence that comes from local leadership. And you know, the world I'm in uh, is kind of could learn that you get things done with cooperation. And you get hard, hard, hard things done with cooperation. And here we are. And just think about it, this public space, just right here, you look out over this magnificent river, so that is getting opened up. It's something we can all enjoy, wander down here uh, on a warmer day and have lunch. Uh, but then we're gonna have people that are living right here and being able to walk up around downtown. You've got the transit center, which is gonna help us address uh, the significant transportation uh, challenges that we have. So it's just a wonderful moment to celebrate. And it's a vivid reminder that our efforts make a difference. Everyone who has had a role in this, your role was crucial to making this happen. And this is a legacy that is gonna be here, enjoyed by young and old and generations in the future where they had no clue about how it came about. They'll be growing up in a world where this has always been here. And let's hope that when their opportunity comes, they're gonna have the vision, the will, and the capacity to cooperate that you had. So thank you so much uh, for letting me be here to enjoy this celebration and this extraordinary accomplishment by uh, the citizens, the governmental officials, and the people of Montpelier and of the state. Thank you. Thank you, Congressman Welch. Our senior senator, who grew up just down the road across from the State House, is a tireless supporter of our communities, affordable housing, and public transit. Every year, Senator Leahy successfully leads the effort in the Senate to secure federal funding for affordable housing. Back in 2003, Senator Leahy, along with Senator Jeffords, secured $7 million in federal funding for the Montpelier Transit Center, laying the groundwork for the project. We cannot thank him enough for all he does for our nation, Vermont, and his hometown. And on behalf of Senator Leahy, we'll now hear from Polly Major. Thank you, Eileen. Senator Leahy was here for the groundbreaking of this project a little over a year and a half ago, and I think many of you were here as well, and it was a little bit warmer that day, but the same cheer was there that day as there is here today, and the same excitement for this project. As Eileen mentioned, Senator Leahy has a long association with this project. Back in 2003, he worked with his friend and colleague, Senator Jeffords, to secure funding for the tra original funding for the transit center, $7 million. And what that funding was part of was a vision to create a statewide network of transit centers 
at, in Brattleboro, there's Trans Center in Rutland, one in Burlington, and now with this one in Montpelier, it's really completing that network and completing that vision. Now, when Senator Leahy travels around the state he, and meets with Vermonters, he frequently hears about the challenges of rural poverty. And two issues often rise to the top in those discussions. One is housing and the second is transportation. And we all know that housing provides us all with safety, with health, and with dignity. And transportation links us to our work, our communities, and our families. So he has supported this project throughout the years because it addresses both of those critical needs together. And he knows that it will improve the lives of the Vermonters who live in this building, those who pass through the transit center, and those in Montpelier as well. He wanted to give a special thanks to Housing Vermont and Down Street, who, with their incredible leadership, had the skill and expertise to bring this complex project across the finish line. So he says thank you to Eileen Pelletier and Nancy Owens at Housing Vermont and their incredible teams. He also offers his congratulations to everybody who lent a hand in this project. To the travelers who will pass through this transit center, he wishes a safe journey. And to the tenants of Taylor Street Apartments, he says welcome home. Thank you. The city of Montpelier is always a great partner to Down Street and Housing Vermont. We would not be here today without the hard work of the city staff and the city council led by Mayor Ann Watson. But I want to take a moment and say something to my friend and colleague Bill Frazier. Congratulations, buddy. It's been a long, hard journey. Your determination and hard work were instrumental in getting us here today. As well, I'd like to thank the Montpelier Housing Trust Fund, led by Jen Holler and Polly Nickel, for their support of this project. And now we'll have a few words from Mayor Watson. thank all of you for coming out today to celebrate with us the opening of the Taylor Street building. The council in Montpelier has had a goal of increasing the amount of housing in Montpelier since before I was mayor, since before I was even on the council. Uh, it goes back a long time. So I, um, I know that I uh, don't simply speak for myself when I say that uh, the council is very excited to see this project finally come together. This site has seen some significant transformation uh, over <laughs> the last few months. Uh, and so what I, I just want to uh, take a moment to journey back a little bit to remember what was here. Um, when I first moved here, this was an empty lot with a trailer and an office uh, in, uh, on that site, uh, on the site. And some, some of you may remember that this site was a junkyard before that. Who remembers that? Some folks might remember when it was a junkyard. Uh, what a long way we have come. Uh, this transit center, bus station, and housing are all such a welcome addition and asset to the city. So this is going to be, or it is, this is an entrance to our city. This is a gateway. This is where some people may be taking their first steps into Montpelier, where we have a chance to make a first impression with visitors. I think this modern, lovely building is gonna make a great first impression. I'm also delighted uh, that these uh, 30 apartments that are in this building are gonna be permanently affordable. And in addition, this building is not heated with any fossil fuels, which I think is just remarkable. This is also one of the first buildings that has been built with the river in mind. We have a, a recent campaign in Montpelier to face the river. What does that mean? Uh, we've been ignoring our rivers for a long time, uh, but when you get to take a tour and see the views uh, out of the windows, oh my goodness, the views are amazing and it just so celebrates the rivers. Uh, so that I think is also a, just a wonderful uh, aspect of this building. 
there are many players who have uh, worked together, as has been mentioned, to make this project happen. So in my capacity as mayor, as much as I can represent the people of the city of Montpelier who voted in support of this project, I want to add my voice to thanking all of those who collaborated to make this happen. So thank you to our, our state delegation, uh, also to Downstreet and Housing Vermont, and thank you to the, the state for their uh, collaboration and support um, and financially as well as otherwise in terms of making this project come together. So I'm gonna turn the mic over to our city manager who has been involved with this project significantly longer than I have. Um, so uh, Bill Fraser, our city manager. Thank you, Ann. 30 units of housing, the new shared use path, the new bridge, and a designated green space for a new confluence park. This has also spurred a new Taylor Street upgrade, which uh, the work will begin shortly and will be completed by next July. Next week, on the same site, we're unveiling a new significant piece of public art. The transformation of this area from junkyard, gravel parking lot, and back alley out of town into a modern community center in downtown Gateway will hopefully be completed in the near future with the addition of a new hotel and parking facility. This vision was articulated in the city-state master plan adopted in 2000. That plan was used to secure a city bond in 2002, and as you've heard, seven million in federal uh, highway and transit funds in 2003. In the many, many ensuing years, the project has overcome almost every hurdle imaginable. EPA approval of both testing and then the remediation for a hazardous waste site. FEMA, redesignation of a floodplain requiring us to redo all the flood work, flood corridors. A failing retaining wall out here. Complicated property acquisition processes. Changes in regulations as the time went by. Budget challenges and complexities inherent in using multiple federal funding sources. Through it all, we're here, in front of this magnificent building and site. This work represents a new era of downtown residency and transportation options. This center will improve both transit and interstate bus travel, allow for future rail opportunities, increase pedestrian and bicycling option. With the new parking facility nearby, this will become a hub of true multimodal trans regional transportation. Now I started to think of people to thank, and it sort of started feeling like a graduation where everyone's name gets, so I'm going big picture. But we would not be out here without our amazing partners, Housing Vermont, Downstreet, and Green Mountain Transit. So those folks are here, thank you. And I give a quick shout out to our original housing partner, Redstone, who was going to do this as a private project, realized it didn't work, and gracefully worked to transition it to um, the more public uh, nonprofit agency. We thank uh, VTrans, their highway, transit, and rail divisions, as well as Secretary Flynn, who provided us help. Federal Highway and Federal Transit offices provided the initial funding, regular guidance, and long term patience. The Agency of Commerce and Community Development supported the housing side of the equation while also supplying HUD funding for the retaining wall restoration. Dubois and King, through Jeff Tucker, has served as the overall project manager for many years. GBA Architects not only designed a fabulous building, but led a comprehensive public process in advance of that design. The DEW, our lead contractors and their subcontractors, have worked cooperatively to stay within budget and assure quality on that project, which you will see when you tour. Private landowners, the Moat Trust, TKS Properties, Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, Overlake Properties, the Heaney Family, the Bashera Property, Bashera Family, excuse me, and most notably Alan Carr, all sold all or portions of their private property to the city to allow for this to happen. Two separate local citizen committees invested significant personal time into creating and implementing this vision. City councils over the years remained resolute in seeing this through to completion and made difficult but necessary decisions along the way. City staff in the planning development, public works, finance, and assistant city manager's offices went above and beyond in meeting the many challenges. And I'm gonna throw out one name. Corey Line in public works came in as a new, public, new project manager, young guy, thrown into this very large and complex project with moving parts and large personalities. He's done an admirable job of getting us today's finish line. So if Corey's here, thank you very much.
It's perhaps appropriate for this project that the last minute environmental issues have held up completion of work on the other side of the river. <laughs> like, the, like the rest of the project, though, it will get done and the community will be proud of it. It should be done by spring. I thank all involved for making this project a success and a lesson in perseverance. I thank all of you for listening to these speeches when you really just want to get in and see the buildings. So have a good time. Okay, a couple quick thank yous before I hand it off to Kathy Beyer from uh, Housing Vermont. Um, so I also want to acknowledge Sheila Reed from Senator Sanders' office, who's seated here to my right. You know, here in Vermont, we are incredibly blessed to have such a such strong support for housing and all things community by our entire congressional delegation. And in addition to that, I want to take a moment and thank our state senators and legislators who um, have joined us here today. So if you're here in, in that capacity, thank you, Senator. Thank you. Um, together, they have supported the work of affordable housing and strong communities for many years as well. And now I want to introduce Kathy Beyer from Housing Vermont, my dear friend and colleague, who um, we would not be here today if it wasn't for Kathy's determination um, in the details of this project. When we came in a couple years ago, it was called up and said, Kathy, we got to do this one. And she got in her car and got to Montpelier and got the job done. So thank you, Kathy. Good afternoon. Um, thank you, Eileen, Bill, and Mayor Watson, and everyone who's here today. Um, you know, when Downstreet and Housing Vermont were first approached about getting involved in this, um, in Taylor Street, I remember having some doubts. Um, it, it was a visionary concept, and I got online and Googled, and you know, there's not many examples of housing being built on top of a transit center. In fact, I found one example in the entire country. Um, there is housing built near a transit center, but there's not a lot of examples of housing being built on top. But here we are today, with the vision completed, and this beautiful building at Taylor Street. I call it the most transportation efficient building in the state. Did, did you, yeah. Did you know that the, the money Vermonters spend on their um, energy budget over half of it is on transportation. More than we spend on heating our homes. And according to the Vermont Center for GIS, Vermonters who live in our downtowns spend 50% less time in their cars than the rest of us do. It's just, it's, can you imagine spending half the time in your car that you do now? Um, here at Taylor Street, you can hop on your bike, you can hop on a bus, or you can just stroll downtown. So I am particularly proud of this building today. And uh, as is usually the case, we have um, some investors and funders to thank for helping us get to the finish line. The equity investment in Taylor Street and the construction loan came from People's United Bank. Marilyn Hardiker, Senior Vice President for Commercial Lending at People's is here today. Um, and she's standing in the back. Raise your hand, Marilyn. And, and let me just say, given the fact we have one building but two owners, this wasn't exactly an easy construction loan for Marilyn to underwrite. So I want to give a big thanks to Marilyn. Um, we also had support from our three leaders in our three state leaders in affordable housing: the Vermont Housing Conservation Board, the Vermont Housing Finance Agency, and the Vermont. Community Development Program. During 2017, the legislature, Governor Scott, and our state leaders in housing worked together to pass a $28 million housing revenue bond. It is through this housing revenue bond that we've been able to build more housing across the state, as, as is the case with Taylor Street, which received $1.9 million from that bond. Today we get to hear a few remarks from all three of our state housing leaders, starting off with Gus Selig from the Vermont Housing Conservation Board. What a wonderful day to be with everybody. Um, thank you. I'm going to be very brief today. We invest in housing and conservation all over the state because communities care and because it's a point of unity. And I want to particularly thank Congressman Welch because 30 years ago, the idea of 
the environmental community, the historic preservation community, and housing advocates working together seemed to most people as kind of crazy, and he was one of the lead sponsors and the president of the Senate when the legislation passed. So thank you so much, Congressman. Um, this happened because the city had a vision, and it was a vision of downtown and a vision of access to the river, but also a vision of inclusion. And that inclusion is talked about and worked on by your housing task force and all the taxpayers here, which includes a whole lot of my staff, contribute to that housing, tr that local housing trust fund. And it's one of the reasons that it's so easy to say yes to this community when it seeks resources. Because of the housing revenue bond, which there's a number of legislators who should be called out, including Representative Stevens, Senator Cummings, I don't know if Representative Hooper's here, but all of them supported having a housing revenue bond, and you'll hear from them in a moment from my colleague, Maura Collins, who runs among the most creative housing finance agencies in the country that issued the bond. It is a really big deal that this development, these 30 homes and 19 more down the street have been produced in just one year by Down Street and Housing Vermont, and hats off to you. And really, over the last dozen years, along with the Montpelier Housing Authority, more than 100 homes added to this community, and a tribute to everybody who contributes to the Housing Trust Fund, Planning Commission, who support that work. Because of the revenue bond, our investment here is about double what we usually can do, about one-third of the cost of the project. The last thing I want to just speak to very briefly is we get asked all the time about why is affordable housing so expensive, and I often say, well, if it wasn't expensive, it would be affordable. But there's a different part of why it costs so much, and we, we had this conversation in St. Johnsbury. It's about what our values are. It's not just what the cost is. So we want buildings that are energy efficient. We want buildings that are conveniently located to services and to commerce and to all the amenities of a community. So, and what I want to say is I think in all those cases, this development, these homes, the homes at the French block, the value well exceeds the cost. So to those of you who've done the heavy lifting and made those of us at the Housing and Conservation Board look good by being able to provide grants and loans, thank you so much for a job well done. And we look forward to the next time we can be back in this community. Next, we'll hear from Maura Collins from uh, the Vermont Housing Finance Agency. As Gus said, one of our, the most creative HFAs in the country. Um, VHFA allocated the tax credits to this project, um, but also provided a $500,000 uh, permanent loan to this building. And we closed on that loan in September. I'm a numbers nerd. I love this number. The interest rate is 4.085%. That is a really good interest rate. Thank you, Maura. <laughs> good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I am representing VHFA, one of many funding partners in this project. We uh, awarded the federal tax credits that went to the partners that our partners, People's United, and others invested in. And these federal tax credits make up about 70% of the housing portion of this building. And that program is critical for wonderful downtown communities like this. And we are so lucky to have Representative Welch, who has long supported this important program, including an expansion of that program that's being considered now by the Congress. And it also has the support of both of our senators as well. So in Vermont, we are being an example that our federal partners are pointing to properties like this one when they are championing the need for more of these federal resources. And Bill and others have all spoken to the past uh, history of this site. I am one of the newer comers of the many players um, of this property. I was at the groundbreaking, but I wasn't even in this job at the time that this building uh, uh, first dug the first shovelfuls. And so as one of the newer people, I can't have remarks about the long history of what happened on this site. I've heard the stories of John Anderson and others and the, the tireless champions who fought to make sure this vision became reality but I haven't been a part of that. 
but I have never been so excited to look towards the future for this site. I think that it's wonderful to know that there's such a commitment by Down Street and Housing Vermont and many of the local social service agencies to make sure that homeless Vermonters will have homes in this building. It's wonderful to know about the recreation tra and transportation connectivity that's going to be possible so that this vibrant downtown can be equitable and accessible to all for the future. So thank you for letting me be a part of this, and I look forward to watching this building and its residents blossom from here. Thank you. Thanks, Maura. Uh, the Vermont Community Development Program through the City of Montpelier also provided a critical piece of the uh, funding puzzle. And uh, Commissioner Josh Hanford is here today also representing Governor Scott who couldn't make it. Come on up, Josh. Thank you, Kathy. Well, it's getting chilly and there's a lot of people out there, so I will be quick. But um, just sitting here and watching the people walk by with their dogs and the bike. Um, this is a game changer really for Montpelier to not just be looking towards State Street and at the Capitol but actually appreciating the river that's here and this bike path and this public space is just incredible really for the work we do at the department and downtown housing um, community development this is all of it wrapped in um, in a very pretty picture. Um, I just wanted to thank uh, a lot of folks that are involved, uh, obviously the city of Montpelier, um, Down Street Housing Vermont. Um, but really, I, I remember a day shortly after, I, or maybe a year after Irene, walking with Mike Miller and um, Kevin Casey right on the bridge looking at that retaining wall and um, thinking how could the federal funds that Congressman Welch and, and Senator Sanders and Senator Leahy brought to Vermont from uh, Tropical Storm Irene, um, how could that be a, a, a support here? And thankfully, there, it's weird to say that. Thankfully, the wall was damaged by the high water, but we were able to replace it and remove some of the um, contaminated soil behind it um, five, six years ago, and then uh, add on with uh, direct support for the housing here through the city again um, just recently. So, this is awesome. I really. Uh, plan on spending some time down here myself, walking from up on the hill to the vibrant downtown that uh, you guys have really been champions in um, creating. So thank you. Uh, lastly, Eileen and I would like to thank the people who spent more hours on this building than I think any of us could possibly imagine. Um, uh, echoing Bill Frazier's comments about Gossens Bachman Architects, um, Greg Gossens could not be here today. Tom Bachman is out there, and I believe. <laughs> I just want to say um, Greg is a master at creating a sense of place with the, each building he designs and, um, and beautiful homes for our residents. And I, I really, I think both of us say thank you. Um, a big thanks to our contractor that Bill also mentioned is uh, Don Wills here. I thought he was going to be here, president of DEW. Maybe he didn't make it. But I see some folks with DEW jackets on. If you raise your hand, thank you so much. <laughs> Lastly, we'd like to think uh, we had a team of project managers on this building. We had Allison Friedkin from Down Street, Ted Samuelson from Housing Vermont, Corey Line and Todd Preventure from the city. Um, uh, Sue Allen used to be with the city. Uh, Mary, jo Mary Jane Pointer from Efficiency Vermont. These folks, these folks, and countless others deserve a huge round of applause for all their efforts. We're moments away from getting into the building, I promise. I just want to take a quick moment and thank the uh, board staff and supporters of Downstreet Housing. And I also noticed that uh, both our board member and representative uh, Stevens is over here on the left. So thank you for being here as well. So what we are going to do now is to cut a ribbon and have a community photograph. And we mean it when we say we would love it if all of you could come. We're going to walk around this way. We're going to take a photograph. 
um, as soon as that's done or maybe at the same time. <laughs> Entrance into the, the housing part of the building is going to be this way over here. You'll see a door and the transit center, of course, is right here. So please visit. I got the video here. <laughs> Able and on air. Green Mountain Support Services to empower neighbors with disabilities to be home in the community. Major support also includes Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support come together. 
Allah Israel. All people, no limits.